Afternoon all. Let's do a spin-off video from uh, I mentioned about this uh, seemingly engine abuser. Um, well, from the evidence of being planless, but uh, let's have a look at the World Computer Chess Championship. So Junior has apparently won that, and uh, there was a funny opponent in there, Woodpusher, which I guess must have been original. Um, the absence of uh, Ribka and Houdini from this competition is proved a bit controversial at Chess Gamescom when there's a, an interesting discussion about all this and um, it's it's a shame um, that there is such uh, controversy in the computer chess world but this was I thought this was an amusing game so I thought I'd show you it so Junior playing white against Woodpusher on the 23rd of November so the Sicilian defense was chosen and um, I think um, that uh, Knight f6 is is useful to prompt uh, Knight c3 if you want to play Sveshnikov, you usually play knight f6 first, but here an immediate e5 uh, was played, which can transpose into a Sveshnikov uh, variation, but white is not obliged, you know, to play knight c3. So that's something to bear in mind that if you want to play Sveshnikov, usually knight f6 is, is like the right move order. Um, after d6, I've, I've often played, uh, you know, players playing immediate bishop c4, and it looks very different actually the strategy for white, and actually f7 is often a tactical vulnerability early on uh, with this knight still on, on b5 and you, you sometimes don't want to play a6 then because the knight can just come back to c3 and then to d5 and the other one can come naturally to c3 so this this omission of knight f6 can be uh, a bit of a concern for white's options but here white actually decided to transpose uh, we have a transposition potentially into Svejnikov territory, pardon me. So knight f6, um, bishop g5, and now we're definitely in a Svejnikov. But usually, I'm surprised by this move actually. I, I would have thought b5 is the better move. I'm not sure how much book would push her had. Played actually um, bishop e6, which actually doesn't uh, prevent knight c4 to e3 to d5. Because uh, usually a uh, white will play um, knight d5 here or bishop f6 against b5, pardon me, against b5, uh, bishop f6 or knight d5, and then c3, and then the knight comes like this. But here it seems with bishop e6, knight c4 is, is a logical move now. Uh, trying to exploit that black hasn't played b5, and the knight can reroute like this, getting into that key strategic central square for a light square campaign. Remember the central squares are, are the key ones to try and uh, get control over. And that campaign is, is carried out uh, even more now with, with this uh, voluntarily uh, giving up the dark square bishop. So bishop f6 and of course the d pawn is exposed so no queen f6 is possible. G takes and now knight e3. So white's got this position where uh, it seems you know black might have the two bishops, but he's got a backward. It has a backward d pawn. White's control of d5 seems fairly solid. Okay. Now an unusual looking move because usually a plan in Sveshnikov is to try and make use of the bishop pair, say bishop g7 and then later f5. But it seems to be ruled out here. Both of these breaks are kind of ruled out with the white knights, you know, eyeing you know these these sensitive light squares. And this next move is kind of like not playing with the bishop pair really. In fact, is is more interested in, in giving white double pawns, which gives white um, a bit of dynamism, a bit of pressure on the f file. And of course, there's double pawns on the f file. So bishop takes e3, a bit controversial, especially if black wants the castle uh, king side. And now uh, queen b6, which is a forcing move, but. Uh, strategically, it seems you know Black's uh, play um, is isn't the most ideal because also you know the pawn as well as the f file pressure is supporting d4, so any knight d4s are now ruled out. But uh, White has to defend b2 and e3, and does that with queen c1. And now Black, even though White has this dynamic f file uh, potential pressure, still castles. So White castles uh, attacking automatically f6. And that's protected by the king. Uh, so the king's come out. Black hasn't got the bishop pair compensation. White's still got a kind of bind. <clears throat> Pardon me, on the light squares. 
And now the white queen actually menacingly comes to e1, offering up b2. And this must have been out of the horizon of Woodpusher, because it's now very dangerous, I think, uh, for the black king to take on b2. It looks intuitively that's going to be a disaster. Um, we could try and prove that in the game knight e7 was played, but what would happen if queen takes b2? Let's put this through Houdini, who I think would have would have wiped the floor with uh, these these engines, to be honest. So Houdini at depth 10 is thinking rook b1. Now let's come out with, um, and still rook b1. Okay, so rook b1, kick the queen first, because the queen's supporting c3, so the queen has to go to a3. And now knight d5 on f6. And it might be very tricky to defend this position. Uh, so say rook g8, knight f6, and the queen's coming to h4. I think it's fairly clear that the king safety is gone here, of, of the black king like, losing lots of material as well. Uh, so rook f6, and then h6 is a problem. Uh, so if h6 drops, then probably e6 is a problem. So bishop e2 might actually be threatening things like um, rook e6 soon. So th this would be terrible. Uh, so in the game, actually, after queen e1, knight e7 was played. Then we have queen f2 eyeing the f6 uh, thing. And now, now uh, f6 pawn. The pawn's defended. And now we have this knight maneuver, quite a destructive knight maneuver. Knight e2. So it's a g, g3 and an h5 looks delicious. The queen actually takes on b2 now. So it's displaying some of the classic symptoms of horizon effect now as well. Uh, rook ab1, it doesn't actually snap up the other pawn, it goes to a3. Um, maybe uh, it was considering queen a2 as well, but uh, this destructive knight maneuver on, on, on simply that target f6 is, is gonna, it causes this, this, this funny move now. I wonder if you can s guess what Woodpusher played here. If I give you 10 seconds starting from now. <laughs> okay, okay, we should play King H6, which I just found quite amusing. But like, I don't know, you know, sometimes they can be programmed in strange ways, engines. Um, so it's certainly like an original engine. So Knight F5 check actually now instead of Knight H5. Uh, it's a bit of a change of plan. Bishop takes F5, Queen takes. So there seems to be clearly a, a manoeuvre available now to kind of get in uh, to attack the king. King crawls back, rook f3, is it too little too late? Rook g3 check, the king's escaping or is it? Queen takes h7, eyeing g8. Unfortunately now if the knight moves to g, you know to e7 it's it's blocking the king's escape. So queen, queen uh, check will be winning material. Um, but the decided here uh, to give up the knight, play b5. It's it's pretty hopeless. But now the more accurate move, even more accurate than, than taking a knight, uh, rook g7 was played. Just just going for the the final mate, uh, going for mate as quickly as possible. Uh, black tokenly defended f7 by playing queen takes a2, um, and this was this was blocked. This defense was blocked with c4, and here black. Uh, resigned. Bit of a crush. I think this is the shortest win in the World Computer Chess Championship. I'm showing you it because it's sort of amusing. I don't know if you find it instructive for how to play against this particular uh, move order anyway, against um, an attempted Sveshnikov. Uh, but without black prompting, you know, knight f6 can be a bit dodgy, especially here. I think b5 must be the strongest move, in my opinion, uh, because this, this bishop e6 does allow knight c4. This might be a second branch of theory though. Bishop e6 might have some popularity to it. Um, but the continuation here does look suspect. So white's controlling um, key you know, sensitive light squares and black's voluntarily uh, giving up the bishop pair which also increases of course white's dynamic pressure on the f-file and f6 is a major target. So if black wants the castle king side uh, this seems to be a total recipe uh, for dynamic uh, disaster, as as this game shows. This this key knight maneuver now, 
Uh, the bishop's holding up c2 nicely, afforded, affording this knight manoeuvre. Doesn't matter about the b2 pawn, gains time for the attack. Now we have this amusing uh, king h6, and now change of plan. So king h6 was you know, probably against knight h5, uh, to stop knight h5. But um, change of plan, and this is this is fairly crushing, uh, this position. So uh, uh, one of the more amusing games in the World Computer Chess Championship. Um, comments or questions on YouTube? Thanks very much.